Blog Talk Radio. Rockers and Recovery Media is dedicated to carrying the message of addiction recovery through music, news, events, and festivals taking place within and not limited to the clean and sober community. Hey, hey. Good evening. John Hollis with Rockers and Recovery Radio. I want to uh, take this time to welcome everybody to the show. Most importantly, this is, uh, of course, Sunday Night Live at 6.30 p.m. And what we're doing is a topic-based talk show um, with myself and some guests. And, of course, we're going to be dealing with uh, hot topics of uh, today. May it be political. May it be, you know, people dealing with... uh, you know, spiritual maladies. It could just be about any topic at this point of my life. You know, one of the best things about being on the air and and, and by the grace of God having almost a thousand episodes is that over the years, you know, I always tried to be um, neutral for everything. Well, now that I'm older, I'm not. So we're going to start to look at some real, you know, issues. I mean, let's let's take for an example coming up here. If anybody's seen the State of the Nation um, the other night, and let's talk about the fact that you have people that are dying uh, at a hundred thousand um, a month in the United States at certain times that they don't want to talk about. They'll say it's a hundred thousand a year, but when you start to take all the addictions and all the different um, substances that people OD from, you start to take all of those things and you put them together. It's just catastrophic. Um, I've been talking about this issue since 2008, 2009, and it's grown and it's grown and it's grown and it's grown, and I stopped talking about it. But when I watched the State of the Nation the other night, one of the things that I realized more so than anything is I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, when it comes to this topic, it's all about showboating for the politicians because they don't really want to have any change. Because if they wanted change, they'd close the border. If they wanted change, they would get involved in real community events and shut down the problem. Instead of spending billions of dollars on education and, and all of the crap that they spend their money on, they should maybe take them same dollars and spend it on treatment beds and extended long-term treatment. So that's my opening for tonight. Um, uh, and, you know, there's a whole lot more that we're going to get involved in. And this, just, this is our first show back. And I want to be able to talk about two different things also, is that Rockers and Recovery is now you know in the pennsylvania mountains and up here in the pocono mountains in pennsylvania and it's been um a journey to say the least so we have an event coming up this weekend it's going to be an event that's being held at five loaf house five loaf house is a great organization i want you to check them out at five loafhouse.org and they're presenting music cafe night music cafe night is really the genre most importantly, about the singer-songwriter. We want to bring up singer-songwriters that, you know, have their own music and they have their own talent and they have a spotlight to go to. How many people don't have a spotlight to be able to showcase their music, their art, their poetry, you know, what they may be doing in their own fellowship, how they might be carrying the message of hope to the next person? There's so many different things that people can put together. And as a community outreach center, the Five Loaf House is just that. What we're here to be able to do is to help the person in the community that needs us the most, but most importantly, reach out to the people that can help more people in a community. And we all come together under one roof. Five Loaf House can be reached at fiveloafhouse.org. Please check out the website, like them on Facebook. Also, you know, we're getting ready to start a a free community launch, and that's going to be uh, headed up by Wendy, and that will also be listed at the fiveloafhouse.org website. I also want to talk to everybody about John Lehman from PAR. John Lehman um, is probably one of the coolest guys I ever knew. 
and John was a part of our festivals, and he was a part of Rockers and Recovery Radio. He had been on, you know, the show several times. One of the one of the best attributes about John Lehman was that John took the bull by the horns in South Florida and helped clean up the recovery industry. When it was the wild, wild west, and everybody was running around, ripping everybody off down there, and and and, and it was just a nightmare. Um, when you have major newspapers stepping in and saying that it is, you know, the uh, cash cow of the recovery industry, and there was all kinds of other things that were said, John took it a step further and started FAR, the Florida Association of Recovery Residents. It was to make sure that people weren't taken advantage of. And he started that back in 2012. It could have even been a little bit before that. I think it might have been 2010. But I will tell you this about John. John, along with the West Palm Beach Attorney General's Office uh, and the State Attorney General's Office, and hosting things like at Rockers and Recovery and other places, and we were glad to help that situation to clean up the, of course, South Florida uh, funds that were not appropriately dealt with, maybe people getting help, um, and most importantly, the corruption. Uh, we had guys like Chapman. He just got 26 years in prison. That was all about corruption in the industry. You know, I thank God for John Lehman, and I thank God for the West Palm Beach um, Attorney, state attorney's office because they were really the forefront of getting this out there. They used our platform to talk about stuff from time to time. John has been on our show. He was on our show for several several uh, uh, different episodes talking about the new things that were taking place and how the industry was changing and how it was becoming more efficient for the client the patient, whatever you want to call us. <laughs> I want to tell you that John passed away. After a long battle um, with, you know, uh, an illness, and he, he, he passed away, and with a heavy heart, I say that um, the industry has, watched, has lost a watchdog that, in my opinion, started to change that within the recovery community we see today. Um, to his daughter, uh, I got to tell you, um, you know, John was was an amazing thing, or amazing person to uh, to the industry, and I want to thank you for bringing it forward with him um, and. You know, it's 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 a scary thing when we lose somebody because they don't know who's going to fill that vacuum. Well, I do. It's Whitney Lehman, and Whitney Lehman is taking the helm and has taken the helm for a while now and is kicking butt at far. So I want to take this time to thank, of course, John for everything he did for the recovery community over the years. May you fly high with the angels, John, and most importantly. I hope that FAR goes on to do all of the things that you wanted it to do, which I already know it has achieved those things, and all the things that you've seen in your visions for what FAR was. And to Whitney and her family, our condolences from Rockers and Recovery, and our prayers are with you and John as you guys move forward. And if there's anything I can do or Rockers and Recovery can do, don't hesitate to reach out, um, and we'll try to make anything we can happen for you guys. Um, with that, I am going to also invite you to be a part of Rockers and Recovery on Facebook. Just go to Facebook, click on Rockers and Recovery. You can listen to the shows there. You can go to Blog Talk Radio forward slash MKR hyphen. Kingdom Radio. So please check us out at Music Kingdom Radio. 
check us out at Rockers in Recovery. <clears throat> I also want to take a few minutes uh, tonight, and I'm going to play Just Enough Faith. This is a song that was written by George Massenville, um, the director, music director of Rockers in Recovery. It was also, of course, uh, written about a year ago. And um, Davis Mitchell was the co-writer on this. And just take a listen, just enough faith. And then when we come back, um, I'm going to put on John Lehman's final show with us. So that way you guys can hear his final message um, from a few years ago. A little outdated, but it's still nonetheless John Lehman. So here you go, just enough faith from uh, George Massengill and Davis Mitchell. Enjoy the song, and I'll be back right after this.
George Madison gal, Davis Mitchell, Just Enough Faith. I want to thank everybody again for being a part of the show tonight. Check us out at Rockers and Recovery on Facebook. Most importantly, check us out at Rockers and Recovery on Blog Talk Radio. You can check us out at Music Kingdom Radio on Facebook. Well, and of course, we um, have the Five Loaf House uh, event coming up. And again, we already discussed it at the beginning, but I am going to tell you about it one more time because it's important. We got Jay Jake Pfeiffer coming to the Five Loaf House. He's a singer songwriter. Saturday, February 18th from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. featuring right there at the Music Cafe at Five Loaf House uh, live music. And J.J. Kuyper, again, will be the singer-songwriter of the night. No cover charge. All are welcome. Come enjoy some great music and good times. Coffee and beverages and snacks are available. The address is 133 Firehouse Road, Pocono Pines, Pennsylvania, 18350. More information can be obtained by going to fiveloafhouse.org. I want to thank again our people that make that possible. One of them is the Wesleyan Church. And, of course, the other folks that are involved over at the Five Loaf House. All come together under one community center. Tonight, without further ado, I'm going to put on John Lehman from Up Far. His last show with us um, was around probably 2017. 2018, and, um, you know, Google's to John, and Just Enough Faith, uh, the song that we just was played, uh, is in his honor tonight, and uh, wish uh, everybody a great night, and we will be back next Sunday with a full show. I hope everybody gets to watch the Eagles win the Super Bowl tonight. Have a great night. We'll talk soon. Rockers and Recovery Media is dedicated to carrying the message of addiction recovery through music, news, events, and festivals taking place within and not limited to the clean and sober community. Hey, Tim Ryan here with the Man of Recovery Foundation. Just got in from Arkansas. Want to let you know, Rockers and Recovery is having a big event November 11th at the 101 Club in Pompano Beach, Florida. Going to have a ton of music, fellowship. I have the opportunity to come down, I get to speak, share a little bit of hope. Really excited about this event, so if you are in the Florida area, Palm Beach down to Miami, Lake Worth, whatever, head to the 101 Club. Starts at uh, 2 in the afternoon, $10 entrance fee. Come on in, share some fellowship. Again, I will be speaking there, really honored to be able to come in and be a part of this. Uh, If you want to follow me, you can check us out on Facebook, From Dope to Hope, or check out our foundation, www.amirf.org, or for my full-time career, I'm a National Outreach Director for Transformations Treatment Center out of Delray Beach. We will also be a sponsor for this event. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day. Hey, John Hollis with Rockers in Recovery. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, being a part of tonight's show. And, of course, uh, a great uh, friend of ours, John Lehman, the Florida Association of Recovery Residents Bar. You know, uh, John has been, this has been a labor of love for John. Been working on it for many, many years. And to watch it unfold and to watch what it has become over the years, I think John spoke at, uh, or the first time he spoke for us at an event was in 2012, and he's been at just about every meet and greet, and I think it's four, five, six meet and greets, and uh, six festivals, and he's just been a, a huge supporter of Rockers and Recovery. But I, I, you know, I love what the Florida Association of Recovery Residents is all about, and what his whole premise and what his vision was, and still is. And I just want to bring him on the line and get him, you know, to uh, tell us a little bit about the association, and then we're going to start talking about current events. John, welcome to the show. Thanks for being a part of Rockers and Recovery and all the support that you've given our events over the years, and of course, Rockers and Recovery ourselves. Uh, give us a little bit of background on the Florida Association of Recovery Residents before we get started. 
So, well, certainly. And first, thank you for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be uh, on Rockers in Recovery and, and to participate in your events. And and, uh, and as much as, as your words are very kind about FAR, uh, Rockers in Recovery has always been a very strong supporter of the Florida Association of Recovery Residences, and, and, and so we thank you for that. Uh, FAR is... Um, you know, it's evolved. When it when it was first founded, uh, it was founded by Nancy Steiner. Uh, she was the executive director of a uh, recovery residence in Delray Beach called the Sanctuary. Um, uh, ironically, the um, the Sanctuary is closing its doors. It's a nonprofit owned by um, uh, Eric Clapton's Crossword to Antigua um, mm-hmm. platform, and uh, and unfortunately, as a result of all the negative. Uh, press, uh, national media attention that South Florida has received in the last year. Um, the board of, uh, of Crossroads and Antigua decided to close down the sanctuary in Delray Beach. It's a shame. Uh, and very sad ironic. Day. Uh, sad day. Yeah. And Nancy's yeah. a great person. Absolutely. Yeah, she is, and she uh, she 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 is uh, was one of the original members and, and founding members of the National Alliance for Recovery Residences NAR, which essentially uh, promulgated a set of, of standards, quality standards for the operation of uh, recovery housing, um, and and then that set of standards was uh, brought by Nancy here to Florida, and uh, about a year after that occurred back in 2011, I was invited um, uh, to participate in trying to get the message out and encourage recovery residence operators to um, uh, apply for certification. There wasn't a statute. There wasn't a requirement that they do it. And there were a a fairly substantial number of uh, quality operators that had been around for a very long time that wanted to be able to identify the themselves as as being um, uh, you know consistently delivering quality service and 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 and, and so some of those twenty year old platforms applied and went through the process and the rigors of qualifying to um, uh, measurement of compliance with that initial set of standards that had been published by NARM. And around that time, there was a lot of effort by the NIMBY groups, by the Not In My Backyard groups, uh, to pass legislation uh, at the state level that would require sober homes to register. Um, and, the, and, the, and that effort at that time, back in 2012, 13, and 14, was, was mostly about, we don't know where you're located, but as soon as we know where you're located, we're going to get rid of you using zoning ordinances. And we fought back against that. We were invited by the Department of Children and Family Services in 2013 to participate in a research uh, study and, and, and uh, answer some questions that the Senate Appropriations Committee had posed to DCF about sober homes. And, um, and then we also became aware um, that there were some bad practices taking place both in the sober home uh area particularly in the southeast florida uh, sector but also in the addiction treatment space and uh we we as we became more aware of how those bad practices were impacting the lives and the uh wellness of the residents of sober homes and the patients of treatment centers we began to uh, advocate for uh, law enforcement to do something about the problem, and that had to do with patient brokering and insurance fraud, and and all of the things that we've now, you know, seen the media make a big deal out of in South Florida. But it's not just isolated to a South Florida problem; it's it's happening all over the nation. And and then more legislation was proposed, and uh, we were able to reshape that. Uh, that legislation from its NIMBY purposes to a uh, a more um, uh, a focused attempt to improve the quality of service, and, and that led to voluntary certification of recovery residences to national standards. And then once that was passed and signed by the governor in the 2015-16 session, the Department of Children and Family Services chose FAR to be the credentialing entity, 
And lo and behold, this year, um, you know, fast forwarding, uh, the city of Delray Beach, the city of Boynton Beach, um, both passed ordinances that require fire certification in order for a recovery residence or any recovery housing platform, including those that are owned and operated by uh, treatment centers, uh, to to be certified by the Florida Association of Recovery Residents in order to achieve reasonable accommodation. So it came full circle, and um, and we've we really had an amazing run with a lot of support from a lot of people. And now we get to focus our attention on um, how do we improve the quality of service that's delivered in recovery residences, and how do we partner with addiction treatment centers to address this new problem that we have, which is that people with an addiction or substance use disorder are exiting clinical care, and we're talking about quality clinical care, not the shoddy stuff, and typically relapsing within five to uh, five weeks to, to six months uh, from the time that they 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 begin to integrate back into the community, and then they're recycling back through addiction, acute care over and over again, sometimes three or four times in one year, and it's costing everybody a lot of money, and many of those individuals don't survive. They die from an overdose um, you know, before they, they get back into care, and so we've got to make certain that we, we, um, we, we make a better mousetrap. And that's what this year and next year is about. How do we partner up to support individuals to develop the recovery management skills that are necessary to sustain recovery? How do we help them get integrated into the community and develop uh, supportive networks uh, as they migrate from the active use social networks of their addiction career to the uh, pro-social positive healthy networks of their recovery career? And we're working with Dr. David Best from Sheffield Helm University, one of the world's leading recovery uh, researchers and, uh, and and treatment partners in South Florida, as well as uh, some of the finest recovery residences in the country, uh, to deliver evidence-based recovery support services using certified, trained peers. Uh, to help uh, those individuals bridge from addiction treatment to sustainable recovery. So it's just been a, an amazing five years, just an amazing five years. It's really humbling, and, and um, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful experience for me uh, to be participatory in all of this. Yeah, and you look at, you know, you were just discussing the fact that over the last year, the exposure – you know, Megan Kelly did a, uh, a huge uh, interview, and and there was yeah. stuff written in the New York Times, and there's stuff written all over the place. And 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 if you're looking, I mean, it's everywhere. This isn't just something that is for the South Florida community. It's happening in the Philadelphia area. It's happening up in New England. It's happening out on the West Coast. It's happening everywhere. This isn't just like you know a South Florida thing. So cleaning no, it up, and then, really. And, you guys are like really yeah, running. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's going on. In, it's going on in every major market in the country, and 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 you know, I think one of the things that you will see, you will begin to see, whatever the media, and I'm not even taking pot shots at them. I understand it. Whenever the media gets hold of a um, hot, sexy story, they're going to run with it, and they're going to they're going to pretty much air all of the dirty laundry first, uh, and that's what we've seen. But what I think is coming. And I know that that it's coming soon because I've been interviewed, and I know of a number of other people that have been interviewed about this. Is articles in in, in a series of articles that will be published in the New York Times and other uh, major uh, media outlets about the fact that a this is a systemic problem around the country. It's not isolated to South Florida. Second, that Fl- South Florida is the first area of the country to blow the whistle and to legislatively and from a law enforcement perspective take action to address it so while it's going on in texas it's going on in california it's going on up in new england as you just pointed out florida is the first region in the country to uh take you know constructive and definitive action to address the 
bad actors in the space, the predatory uh, uh, behavior of those that are just looking to profit off of this vulnerable population. And, um, and, and it was the quality uh, providers uh, in both the addiction treatment and recovery support sectors that blew that whistle and that funneled all of that information into law enforcement and that demanded, frankly, that law enforcement take action to clean it up because we all perceived it rightly as these bad actors had invaded our space and they were taking advantage of this population that we were trying to help. And and many of those uh, uh, those good quality ethical law abiding pro- providers had g- very great risk to themselves. Um, they exposed this um, this you know bad uh, bad behavior uh, 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 going back as far as 2012, and cons- consistently and continually provided the information into. Uh, law enforcement to support their efforts to clean it up. So, so South Florida, literally, is the one that raised it to the level that the media finally caught wind of it. And the media hasn't begun to tell that story, but that story is coming. And as that story unveils, I think what we'll see is uh, the reputation will 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 be restored. More importantly, to my way of thinking, is that. In addition to all of the cleanup efforts, there are really incredible uh, efforts underway in South Florida to improve the quality of care and support that is being provided to achieve this uh, sustainable recovery model um, that is absolutely necessary. I mean, we have a uh, addiction crisis. We talk a lot about the opiate crisis. Uh, And for good reason. Um, But let's not ever forget the fact that while there uh, uh, is a lot of there are a lot of individuals that have an opiate uh, addiction, there are more individuals in this country that have an alcohol addiction uh, and more die from alcoholism than die from overdoses to to opiates or benzos combined. So we have an addiction problem. And, and 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 we need to figure out how we're going to improve how we treat people, how we get people into treatment, how we provide quality treatment to address that addiction problem, and how we support individuals who are exiting treatment and reintegrating into the community to sustain their recovery and get to that you know one year two year mark where the statistics say. Uh, there's a 75% likelihood that they will sustain their recovery uh, for the remainder of their lives. Right now, the stats are are atrocious um, uh, here and elsewhere in the country. Um, you know, the majority of individuals who receive quality addiction treatment will relapse within six months of the time they exit treatment, and and that's because we don't have support infrastructure in place. And we need to fund support infrastructure. Insurance companies don't pay for that. Uh, they do for other chronic conditions, but not for recovery. Uh, you can't get a recovery coach paid for by an insurance company. You don't go for a 90-day uh, checkup to see how you're doing in your recovery paid for by your insurance company. My wife is a type 1 diabetic, and every 90 days she goes to see her endocrinologist, and the insurance company pays for that. That doesn't happen in addiction, and it needs to. And and so there are a lot of steps that are being taken right now in South Florida, where the leadership exists, uh, to to improve the mousetrap and and bring about uh, uh, enhanced outcomes. The Recovery Outcomes Institute has been formed here, and uh, some of the world's leading researchers in the uh, recovery space. Uh, academics from England and and here in the United States are, are participatory in that program, and that's right out of Lantana, Florida. Uh, an evidence-based practice uh, known as RecCap, which is an assessment of recovery capital, uh, is a tool that was developed by Dr. David Best of Sheffield Helm University. It's been pioneered here in Florida. Uh, it's an online assessment tool. It's about to be released uh, internationally. Uh, for use in the addiction treatment space as well as in the recovery support space 
uh, through the Recovery Outcomes Institute. That announcement will be made uh, public uh, in another couple of weeks. Uh, I think the NAR best practices sum it up in, in Chicago. Um, there's uh, an effort underway right now for uh, the, one of the managing entities under the Department of Children and Family Services to fund the, the um, delivery of recovery support uh, services within FAR certified recovery residences to the indigent population using uh, monies uh, that have been allocated by our legislature. These are revolutionary um, cutting edge technologies funded by with state dollars to improve the uh, uh, the outcomes that are produced by um, by addiction treatment and recovery support services so we're ahead of we're leaders in this industry we've always been leaders in this industry here in south florida and and, and that hasn't changed we're 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 still at the at the the front uh, uh, of the leadership pack showing people how to improve the quality of care and enhance outcomes. Recovery Outcomes Institute, which is ROI, is offering a training uh, to qualified peers, and that's at Hanley Center. Is that correct, October 13th? Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, if anyone that's interested uh, to uh, attend that training uh, and learn more about how recovery capital, uh, what is it and how is it assessed and uh, what recovery uh, care planning uh, instruments uh, are used to to improve recovery capital over time. Uh, the the training is is at uh, Hanley Center on October 13th, and if you simply go to uh, uh, ROI's website, which is recoveryoutcomes.org, uh, you'll be able to register for that event. It's a free event, um, and uh, there are seats uh, that still remain. And Dr. Best. Uh, from Sheffield uh, is flying over from England and arrives here on the 12th, and he will be leading that training. And then he gets on a plane with me and some others, and we're flying up to Chicago, and the same training will be presented there as the NAR Best Practices Summit. Um, that The state of Maryland is looking at uh, delivering that uh, service in certified recovery residences as well as potentially in um, – uh, clinical uh, platforms uh, that are funded by the state up in in that state, um, and there are other uh, opportunities where we're having discussion with some of the major leading uh, private insurance companies about funding pilots because everybody's looking for a way to improve outcomes and and to and to measure outcomes, and this instrument does both of those things. John. You rock, man. I'm glad that you're still uh, – we we had a little scare with John uh, a few weeks ago, and I'm grateful that uh, you're still with us and hanging out. Um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. I got to take a vacation over at uh, that, that uh, JFK in Lantana, and I got to tell you, <laughs> had unbelievable medical care. They, the, the people over there in the cardiac uh, department and – yeah, they. I had a stroke, and and they uh, they saved my brain and 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 gave me a little rest, and uh, I was just incredible quality care. So I'm I'm fortunate, but but it's not about me. I mean, I you know I am I am humbled, and and I mean and I mean this sincerely. I this isn't an unbelievable experience for me, but I have been one of many many individuals that have been you know really. Um, acute contributors to uh, uh, bringing quality standards to South Florida and then beyond South Florida to the rest of the state uh, through FAR. And, and, and then that has offered me an opportunity to participate with some of the finest minds in the world that are you know, focused on how do we improve uh, outcomes for individuals who have a substance use disorder, and it's an amazing experience to participate with these people. So there's a great article that uh, will be released in Counselor Magazine uh, sometime hopefully before the end of the year. This is a series of case studies on this. Uh, recently, there was another article that was published in Addiction Professional uh, on this. Uh, there's been um, 
video uh, recordings of some of the trainings and that information is getting edited now and it'll be up on the website and it'll turn into a um, a um, uh, online learning opportunity in the future. So uh, there's just so much energy around uh, the good work that's being done by uh, professionals in this space that are really dedicated to the well-being of uh, individuals with a substance use disorder who are looking to achieve sustainable recovery. And I'm, I'm just humbled and, 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 and proud to uh, to get to play. Far online.org John's phone number is 561-299 Rockers and Recovery Radio is based on opinion only and is not meant to treat or diagnose any health or mental health issue of any kind. If you feel you need help for any health related issues, please contact a physician or mental health professional. The opinions expressed by our guests are not necessarily those of Rockers and Recovery. guys next Sunday night. Enjoy the rest of your week. Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off Movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, full work, limited by law, 18 plus, terms and conditions apply. See website for details.